Okay, so by now you've probably seen a lot of the space photos I've been taking on this YouTube channel. A lot of the nebulae, galaxies, and I even featured Saturn in one of my videos. But have you ever seen any stars in my images? Have you ever seen me take pictures of stars? The easy answer to that would be, yeah, of course, there's stars everywhere, right? There's literally stars in space. You see them everywhere in the night sky, and you see thousands of them in my images. But really think about that question for a second. Have you ever seen me take a picture of a star? Think about it real quick. All right, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I'm... All right, have you thought about it? Yeah, well, the answer would be no, but yes. Today and not tonight, I'm gonna to be taking a picture of the sun through my telescope. And first of all, before I even begin this video, do not take a picture of the sun. Don't even look at it, in fact. But also, please, look at the sun and take pictures of it. I forgot to put my sunglasses on. Oh, bro, why can't I see anything in these? What's that big orange ball in this guy? Wait. tough to find shade out here. All right, you guys, welcome back. And we are here and we are here for a different kind of video. This is a video that I was not really expecting to do until last month where I didn't really have a lot of clear skies. So today I'm gonna to be taking a picture of the sun in broad daylight. Yeah, that sounds a little bit crazy, doesn't it? I mean, you would kind of expect it to be hard to take a picture of the sun, right? I mean, it's so bright and you could damage your eyes just taking a look at it. And through a telescope looking at it, it's even worse. And before I even start this video, I want to make this really blatantly honest. Be extremely careful when taking a picture or looking at the sun. And I mean this with 100% honesty. Taking a look at the sun without a solar filter or the proper eyewear can cause permanent damage to your eyes and or your camera. If you look at the sun without a solar filter, you will permanently damage your eyes and you will become blind. If you take a picture of the sun with your camera without any proper solar gear, you will also melt your camera. So be extremely careful and use protective gear when taking a picture of the sun. All right, well, now that that's out of the way, let's get rolling. Okay, so first of all, you're probably wondering how did an astrophotographer like myself just be like, you know what, I'm gonna switch from taking pictures of things in the night to taking pictures in broad daylight. How is that even possible? Well, it is very possible and a lot of people do it. To take a picture of the sun, I'm gonna be using my homemade solar filter, which is right here. here. I designed this by myself off of a YouTube video and it actually works really, really well. The idea behind these solar filters is to block out a lot of that sunlight almost well over 90% of the sun's sunlight so that you don't damage your eyes or your camera gear, making it safe to observe and photograph the sun. A lot of people do this during solar eclipses especially, and recently there was a solar eclipse last month, I think it was sometime around like October 13th, 14th, and uh, yeah, it was clouded out, so I couldn't take a picture of it, so don't mention it. Don't mention, I'm still really mad about it. But we are hoping for the April total solar eclipse, so. But it makes it extremely capable of taking some amazing pictures of the sun. There's really two forms of taking pictures of the sun that you might wanna learn about before you start taking a dive into solar photography. The first form of solar photography, which is the solar photography that I'm gonna be doing today, is called white light solar photography. This involves using a solar filter and only a solar filter to look at the sun in some detail. Why did I say some detail? Well, once I start talking about the other type of solar photography, you'll understand. Doing white light solar photography allows you to view the sun's chromosphere, and this is basically viewing the sun in all natural light. You're viewing the sun as if you were to look at it with your eyes, and if your eyes were able to see what the sun is. But because our eyes can't see technically all wavelengths of light, or even separate ones, kind of like how we can't see a lot of nebulae in space, this follows the same general rule, and we can't see a lot of other details on the sun. But we still can see some pretty crazy stuff, like sunspots, and sunspots are little dark patches on the sun 
I'm not really sure what those are in specific because I kind of just started solar photography, but they are really cool to photograph and they do kind of pop out like just out of nowhere. You can also see a lot of the weird little shapes of, I guess you can also see a lot of the weird shapes of the chromosphere on the sun. So the sun... <laughs> So the sun isn't really just a giant orange or yellow ball. There's actually some really interesting stuff on there. Visibly just on the surface of the sun during white light solar photography, you can see a lot of the, it almost looks like ripples and little cracks in the sun that look really cool when you're stacking your pictures, kind of like how you take pictures of the planets. The other type of solar photography is narrow band solar photography. You remember that word narrow band, right? Yeah, it's a pretty good name. Narrowband solar photography is much, much more expensive. To start solar photography, all you need is a solar filter and, and a telescope or whatever you have, and just put that right on your observing camera or even your eyes. Solar film is about $10. I got mine for $10, and I was able to make a homemade solar filter out of it. So I was able to take pictures of the sun with just $10 spent. Narrowband solar photography, though, yeah, you're gonna have to spend a lot of money on that. Narrowband solar photography takes a look at the sun in a whole new perspective, in a much cooler perspective in my opinion. You are able to see the sun in hydrogen alpha light, but it's not the same kind of hydrogen alpha light that we see in a lot of nebulae gases. There are special telescopes to observe the sun in this kind of detail called solar telescopes, and they are designed for looking at the sun in probably the most ways that you've seen the sun look like. If you look up a picture of the sun, you probably we see a lot of the fiery stuff like just spewing out of the sun and that is exactly what narrowband solar photography can get you. Even visually you can look at the sun in this kind of detail when you separate the natural light emitted by the sun with that real tiny narrowband light. That narrowband light will be able to allow you to see some crazy stuff on the sun. You'll see a lot of solar storms, solar explosions, all this fiery volcanic looking stuff on the sun and it really gets me excited for no reason because I don't have a solar telescope. We call a lot of these solar events on the sun solar prominences, and that is really what we are taking a picture of if something big happens on the sun. So now that we know that there's two forms of solar photography, make sure you decide which solar photography is best for you. I would start with white light solar photography in case you don't really like taking pictures of the sun first and so you don't waste a lot of money jumping into the more expensive narrowband solar photography. So you guys probably remember this little guy. Yeah, this is the Optolong L Enhance and this is a narrowband filter. So really remember that name, narrowband. Why can't I just use this filter to take a look at the sun in narrowband? Well, it's really different. So you can toss this dude Goodbye. Don't ever do that with your filter. That was just for the video. <laughs> but the sun needs a even more narrow filter than what you would use for most night sky observing and imaging filters so that you can't really use a narrowband filter to take a picture of the sun. You need to have special solar narrowband filters or have a really narrow narrowband filter. So sadly my filter is too wide enough and I can't see a lot of those solar prominences with my filter but you can see them with the solar telescopes that have built-in narrowband filters designed for looking at the sun in that really insane looking detail. All right, so now that we've talked about the different kind of styles of taking a picture of the sun, I'm gonna show you guys how I get my stuff set up for taking pictures of the sun. But before I do that, let's talk about the game plan. So the game plan is going to be taking a video of the sun just like I do with planets. And this is gonna be the same exact rule take really long videos, I mean I guess not really long, but the goal is to take three minute videos of the sun because the sun also rotates really quickly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack all of those pictures together just like I do with the planets and then sharpen it up and we're going to have a really good image of the sun, at least I'm hoping so. If things go south and my camera melts, then that would be completely on me because I need to make sure that I have everything completely covered on my solar filter because sometimes bad things can happen if you don't. So we're going to be taking some really safe procedures and measures before I take a picture of the sun. If all goes wrong, I'm just going to quit astrophotography and never do it ever again. Alright, so that's the game plan, so let's get rolling. All right, 
right, so it's time to get everything ready to get started to view the sun and take some pictures of it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my cameras off. And this is just to make sure that I don't damage my cameras when checking my solar filter to make sure that everything's fine. So I'm just gonna set these over here. All right, now that those are off, I'm going to take my guide scope off. And this is to make sure that I don't burn anything through this guide scope because this guide scope will not be covered with a solar filter. So I'm just gonna take it off also because I don't really need it, so. All right, now that I got this off, it's time to take a look at my solar filter. Okay, so even though I already know that my filter works, I just wanna make sure that I know that it works perfectly because even the slightest amount of sunlight can really damage my camera when I'm taking pictures of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna make sure that all of these parts right here are all covered because if any of these are not covered, that's gonna allow some sunlight to come through. And sealed on here. Okay, and that's good, that's perfect. So the next thing I'm gonna do is make sure that there's no scratches or little punches or hole marks in my solar filter and there doesn't seem to be any. Then, because if there was, then that would allow some sunlight to come through and we do not want that. I'm pretty sure that everything's looking nice and good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on the front of my telescope. You wanna make sure that you don't have a solar filter inside your telescope because that will not protect your camera gear from the sun. It works best when it's on the front of the telescope like this. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up my laptop and get the software going and start getting everything plugged in, especially the mount. Okay, so now I have all the preparations and it's time to finally take a look at the sun. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into my little hand controller here and I'm going to hit the sun and it's gonna give me a warning that says, viewing the sun can cause permanent eye damage. And that is true, so make sure you look at that before you think about looking at the sun. So now it's time to salute to the sun. Yeah, this is the long part. Looking at my telescope just slew, it kinda takes a while. So the next thing that I'm going to do, and I will show this separately, is I'm going to hold my hands out at the back of the telescope. And this is to make sure that my solar filter is working when it's looking at the sun and there's no reflections or there's not any light passing through. If there are light passing through, then I would have to stop what I'm doing and make sure that there's nothing else to be seen through that telescope. If my hands are completely dark and there is a shadow of darkness looking through that telescope off of my hands, then that means that my filter is ready and I'm able to start taking pictures of the sun with the camera on the back there. All right, it looks like we're all good and my filter is working as it should, so it's time to attach my camera to the back of that telescope. Alright, so my game plan seemed to work out perfectly. We are taking videos of the sun right now, and everything is going perfectly fine, so the game plan, let's go. So as soon as I'm done getting these videos, I'm going to put them into my stacking software and then sharpen them up, and then we're gonna see those sunspots in some really good detail. I'm super excited to see what is on the sun today, and there's a website that I use that's by NASA that takes images of the sun daily, and it shows you all of the cool little sunspots and stuff that you could see any day if you ever wanna know what's on the sun. So luckily there is a sunspot or two on the sun right now, and that is just enough for me to get some good images of the sun today. So with all that out of the way, I am super excited to share you guys my image of the sun that I was able to get today and not tonight. So now it's time to show you guys that. It's been a pleasure, and I will see you guys on the next clear night or day, or the next clear day. I'm going to change that up.